Drawing pampas grass is easier than you think and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. So as usual, we're going to start by creating a new canvas. For reference, these are the dimensions of my canvas, but make sure you pick something that works for your own project requirements. If you're not exactly sure what that means, I have a video in which I teach you everything you need to know in order to pick a canvas size for digital art, so I will link that in the description below. Otherwise, the only reason I am using these dimensions is because I am drawing, as you can see, in a file that has some paper texture. Um, I'm gonna hide the example just a second and show you what it means. So it's, it's just a slight paper texture in it, and yeah, that, that file has these dimensions. And if you wanna check it out, it will be linked in the description below. It is part of my Big Brush Bundle, and there's always a special promo code just for the YouTube people. That being said, the file is not essential. I'm gonna give you tricks on recreating some sort of texture in collaboration yourself, even if you don't have this file. That being said, once you do have the file, go ahead and create a new layer for the sketch. And in terms of color here, I created a, as you can see, super simple curl palette that will also be linked in the description below. It is totally free. You can download it. It's just three colors. <laughs> but for the sketch, the color really doesn't matter because we're not going to see it in the final result anyway. So I'm personally going to go with just a neutral gray. And in this video, I'm always going to be suggesting two different brushes. One is going to be a free brush that comes with Procreate and it's going to allow you to do pretty much most of the work, probably getting 80 to 85% of the way there. And the second brush is going to be a brush from the Big Brush Bundle as well, so a watercolor brush. And these brushes are going to help you save a lot, a lot, a lot of time because there's texture already built in them. And you're going to get more professional results with them. But again, they are not essential. They're, you can still follow along even if you don't have them. But if you do want to check them out, they are linked in the description below. So for the brushes for the sketch, you can either use from Procreate in the sketching panel here at the bottom, the HB pencil, or if you have the watercolor brushes, go ahead and pick the coloring pencil. Again, it doesn't matter. It's just for the sketch that we won't see in the final result. And here we're going to roughly map out the main element, mostly just for the composition. So don't worry about having perfect lines here. We just want to know where everything is going to be very roughly. So for that, I like to start with a super basic shape for the vase. So here I'm going to go with a super crazy looking oval. And then once you have your basic shape, you can refine it to give it a more interesting vase shape. So for example, here I'm going with a slightly flatter base, I guess, and then some sort of a tiny opening at the top. But here, feel free to do any shape you want for the vase. Once you have your face, we're going to map out the main branches. So one trick for that, especially if you're working with Procreate, is to start drawing your line and then hold your pencil on the screen, which is going to automatically create a straight line that you can then drag around and place wherever you want it to be. So a good way to place your branches is start from the bottom of the pot, then hold your pencil and kind of align the line so that you can see that it rests on one of the sides of the opening of the face. So that way, if it touches the bottom and the opening of the vase, it may kind of sense it looks like the branches are actually in the vase position there really nicely. And once you have the general idea of where the branches are, just go ahead and draw some sort of a feather shape on the top to mark where the pampas grass fluffiness is going to be. I'm not exactly sure what to call it, but kind of the top of the grass. You can also use the arrow tool here at the top, setting the uh, resizing mode to uniform and then you can use the blue little anchor points on the side to resize and reposition your piece and you can also use the selection tool setting it to freehand to then go back to the arrow tool maybe this time setting it to distort and then you can move and resize certain parts of your sketch so here the sketch again we don't want to have perfect lines we just want to roughly map out where everything is going to be and the proportions and everything so using the selection tool and the arrow tool is going to allow you to move stuff around until you're happy with the composition 
So we are going to go back to our sketch layer, click on the little N next to the check mark and change the blending mode to multiply, which is the first one on top of the list. We're also going to lower the opacity until we can just barely see the sketch. And then we're going to create a new layer that we're going to put below the sketch layer. And this one, we're going to rename it to Pampas. So on this one, we're going to start laying down the colors. And at first it's going to look really, really crazy what we're going to do, but stick with it. And then I'm going to show you a way to kind of make it come together. But for a while, it's going to look absolutely crazy. So in terms of color, you can either use my color palette or pick your own beige color. You want to make sure that it is really quite light. And for the brushes, you can use in the airbrushing panel that comes with Procreate the hard brush and then lower the opacity around 40%. And that way you're going to get some overlap when you draw um, different strokes over each other. You're not going to get any texture, of course, but still the overlapping effect is really what we're looking for in terms of creating some sort of watercolor effect. So that is a kind of a cheat way of doing if you have only the free brushes. That being said, if you have the watercolor brushes, go ahead and pick the dark edges watercolor brush. And here, what are we going to do? You're going to see it's super easy. It's super fun. We're just going to draw a super flowy, crazy random shape on top of our feathery kind of um, rough placement for the pampas grass. So something like this. And the first time you go and do your shape, try not to lift a pencil. Try to color the entire shape without lifting the pencil. Because you know when we have uh, either watercolor brushes or brushes that we reduce the opacity of, we're getting this overlapping effect, which is great. We want that. But we want to try and color the shape first without any overlapping effect so that we can then manually come in and layer them where we want them to be. And since we're drawing some pampas grass, we can have holes, we can have randomness in it, that is totally fine. So once you color the base shape once, you can go over and start adding some totally random little wiggles, mostly towards the bottom of your pampas grass. And you can overlay it once, twice, three, four times until you get some sort of, uh, I don't know, some texture, I guess, in your shape. And again, it is going to look totally crazy at this stage. That's fine. Later, we're going to blend it in. Now you just want to make sure that you have a lot of color variation and different kind of versions of your color. So here, all you have to do is repeat the same step for all the different pieces of pampas grass you have. I'm going to speed up the video. You can either pause it or keep it going to see what I'm doing if you need an example. And we're going to meet up for the next step in which we're going to start working on the vase. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this fun video, please go ahead and comment cottage core. And if you're new on the channel, you might be like, what's the deal with the secret password. Well, we've been doing this for months now and it's just super fun. It gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me create better tutorials for you guys. And it's also super cool because you guys know me, you see my face, you hear my voice throughout the video, but I have no idea who you guys are. And whenever you leave a comment, I get to see sometimes your name, sometimes your face, and it's just really cool to see the wonderful creative community that we're building here on this channel. So leave a comment with the word cottagecore and then we're gonna keep going. Great, so once you have your crazy looking basic color shape for your pampas grass, you can go ahead and draw the actual stem of it. So you want to see it through the vase. So something a little bit like this. And here I recommend you go uh, without using the perfect line feature so that it looks a little bit more natural and organic. Once you have that, go ahead and create a new layer above the pampas, below the sketch and rename it to vase. So this face here, you can really go with whichever color you want. I'm going to stick with super natural earthy color and we're going to stick with the same brush as well. So either the hard brush or the dark edges watercolor. I'm personally going to go with a grayish brown, so a super faded brown. And we're going to do the exact same thing we did for the pampas. So we're going to start by just sketching or filling in the base color for the main shape without lifting the pencil. Here it might be interesting, just a little pro tip, you might want to leave one section white so that you have a highlight on your vase later. So in my case I'm just leaving a white section here on the right. And you can see you really don't have to be crazy precise. As long as you have the base shape, that's totally fine. And don't forget, if you have any opening at the top like me, you might want to draw that as well. Awesome. So believe it or not, at this point, we're done with the hardest part of the video. So if you've made it this far, you can definitely finish this piece. All we're going to do now is blend everything in and add a little bit more details. 
So you're going to go back on your pampas layer and you're going to either use the smudge tool here at the top, setting the brush to the soft brush or the medium brush, making sure that the opacity is at 100%. If you have the watercolor brushes though, you can go and put your paintbrush, so another smudge tool, really the paintbrush, and set it to the water blender. And here, all we're going to do is we're going to blend the weird, crazy digital looking edges so that it looks a little bit more organic, flowy, and watercolor -y. So here you don't want to create a perfect gradient, otherwise it is not going to look like watercolor. So you want to make sure that there's still randomness and still texture, just not as crazy digital looking. So just go over, roughly blend everything uh, with random strokes and random movements. And this step is really super easy, but it's super, super important, especially if you're using the free brushes that come with Procreate, you need to make sure that you blend everything in really well and that you create some randomness manually because you don't have the uh, kind of automatic randomness that comes within the watercolor brushes. So just do that. It shouldn't take too long. It's not complicated, but it is super, super, super important that you take the time to do it. And we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna blend the weird edges on the vase itself. So same brush or same smudge tool, you just go over everything or anything that needs to be blended. But you do want to keep some harder edges in here, especially if you have a highlight like me, you might want to keep one side of the uh, highlight as a hard edge and then the other one you might want to blend it in. You can really experiment with that. And we're also going to add a little bit more shadow on the vase and on the pempas. So for that, go ahead and use the selection tool, sending it to freehand and making sure that the color fill option on the bottom right is deselected. So you don't want that selected. You don't want that activated. <laughs> and then you're going to make a rough selection on the bottom left of your vase that you're going to then feather around somewhere around 20, 25%. You can then go in the adjustment panel here at the top, selecting hue, saturation, and brightness for the entire layer. And then that's going to allow you to create a shadow that is going to be a soft gradient. So you can lower the brightness, you can play with the saturation, you can play with the hue. Honestly, you can do whatever you want here. As long as you lower the brightness, it is going to create a shadow and bring out some more color variation in your piece. So that's super, super cool. And if you're using the free brushes that come with Procreate, you can also do a random selection and follow the same technique and it just create some more color variation by yourself. We're also going to do some shadows on the pampas grass. So selecting the pampas grass layer, going back to the selection tool and then creating a selection towards the bottom of the grass, feathering the selection around 15 to 20 this time and going back to the hue, saturation and brightness tool at the top to create a um, shadow. And here again, the selection shape that you make and the settings that you use, like the numbers here at the bottom, it's really up to you. It depends on your own piece, depends on whatever you want to do. This is just a technique that you can use to create shadows really quickly and to create more color variations super easily. So experiment with that. You can also create lights this way. You can just create some randomness in the color this way if you're not playing with the brightness, for example, if you are to just play with the hue and the saturation. So it's basically just a really easy, quick technique to add color variation and color randomness in your piece, especially for watercolor looking illustrations. Great, so once that is done, we're going to add even more details to make this piece come together. We have a good base, but we want to make it look a little bit more professional and polished. So we're going to create a new layer above the pampas, below the vase layer, and this new one we're going to rename it to extra. And this is the layer where you can draw any other kind of flower or branches in your vase. So in my case, I'm going to go back to the super light beige, make it even lighter and going back to the brush that we use for the sketch. So in the sketching panel, either the HP pencil or you could go with the 6B pencil for that as well. It is a little bit thicker, so that might work well. If you had the watercolor brushes though, go ahead and pick the coloring pencil. And here I'm just going to add these, um, what are they called? Is it cotton tail, rabbit tail? I don't know, but basically you just draw little twigs, I guess, little lines like this. And at the top, you draw a teardrop shape that is kind of fluffy, kind of white and pale and just cute. And that's going to help add more details in your piece and more depth in your piece as well, because you're going to overlay that with the bottom part of the pampas, which as you might remember, just a few steps prior, we made the bottom part darker. So that way these like cotton tail, rabbit tail, whatever they're called, if you know, by the way, what they're called, just, just leave them a comment below. I'd love to know. Um, but yeah, that's going to create some contrast. It's going to also look a little bit sharper because these we're drawing with a sketching brush as opposed to a watercolor soft brush. So these just look super kind of sharp compared to the rest and it brings a lot more texture and depth 
and kind of contrast in the piece overall. So it takes, you can see it took me like 20 seconds, but it makes a big, 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 big difference. And you can also use the hue saturation and brightness tool <laughs> without a selection to affect the entire layer. So in this case, for example, if I wanted to increase the contrast by making my cotton tail <laughs> brighter, you could just go and do it that way in order to get, again, more contrast and more variation in your piece. So instead of having to redraw them, that's a really quick way of kind of tweaking the color a little bit. And we're also going to use this tool to add more texture on the vase if we want, so patterns. So making sure that you select the vase layer again, and this time we're going to use the pencil option in the hue, saturation, and brightness menu or tool or whatever. So you can see we have the same menu that shows up at the bottom, but whatever we draw now while we are on this tool is going to be what is affected by the options at the bottom. So instead of affecting either the entire layer or a selection, it affects what we are drawing. So what I personally like to do is set the hue at 50% and the saturation at 50% and then bring up the brightness, which is effectively going to make everything I draw within the tool lighter. So for example, you could color in the top part of your vase to have a two-tone vase, or you could go in and draw a bit more of an intricate pattern, kind of like we have an example on the right, the vase on the right. So anything you want to draw here, you can draw it within this tool and you can then play with the hue, saturation and brightness to get the color that you want for your pattern. So that's super easy, super fun, and you're going to retain the basic texture. And once you're done with that, I'm going to keep my vase as it is because I like it that way. But once you're done, we can create a group by swiping our layers towards the right and then clicking the group option at the top. And then we can collapse the group by clicking on the arrow and we can also rename the groups. So I'm going to rename it to Pempa's face. That's going to allow us to move all the layers at once by clicking on the arrow here. We can also resize them all at once, making sure that we select uniform so that we don't change the proportions. But that way you can kind of move everything around and maybe give yourself a little bit more space to add a shadow. So if you want to add a shadow, create a new layer that you're going to put below the Pampas face group and rename this new layer to shadow. And we're going to click on the little N next to the check mark to change the blending mode of the layer. We're going to set it to linear burn and we're also going to lower the opacity around 20 to 30% for now. We can also go back to it later. And you're going to pick a beige gray color for the shadow. In terms of brushes, you can pick the soft brush from the airbrushing panel and lower the opacity as well, so around 30 to 40 percent. If you have the watercolor brushes though, go ahead and pick the color shifting blotches. And here, all you have to do is map out a shadow. Here you can see my shadow is really pale. I like to have it super soft in this piece because everything is soft. And you can go back with a darker version of your beige gray and just focusing that one near the face so you know something super simple super chill and soft like this and you can also use the eraser if you want to erase the shadow that is overlapping with the face nothing needs to be super precise but that can be a cool thing to do one other cool thing that you might want to do is to add some splatters so for that you would create a new layer above the pen pass face group rename this new layer to splatters and this one you might want to change the blending mode of to linear burn as well so that the splatters look really cool on top of the other colors that we already have. And in terms of the color for the splatters themselves, you can go back to the base you use for the pampas grass and make it just a bit more of a golden beige, golden brown, golden yellow, I don't know. And for the brushes, you can go in the spray paint panel here using either the splatter or G-clay option. They come with Procreate, they're not great, but it's pretty much the better option you have in terms of free brushes. Otherwise, if you have the watercolor brushes, you can obviously pick the splatter brush and then just go over and drop some splatters over your piece. You don't want to overdo it, but it is a really nice way of bringing the piece together. And you can also go back to the color you use for the vase. So in my case, it was this one and just add some splatters that have the color of the vase around the vase area. <laughs> I said vase way too many times here. If you have the watercolor brushes, you can go back to the vase <laughs> and use the salt brush here. There's really no equivalent that comes with Procreate. So unfortunately, that's kind of an extra step for the watercolor brushes um, user. But the salt brush is kind of a blending brush, so the color of it doesn't matter at all. What matters is that you start from a white or transparent area of your canvas and then drag the brush over the color. You can see it just adds some really nice, simple white speckles on your piece. And if you enjoyed this tutorial and want to draw a more complex, I guess, a dry grass floral arrangement, cottagecore vibe, <laughs> 
please. You can check out this video in which I'm going to teach you how to draw a watercolor cotton flower just like this one. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.